So what I'm going to do, the first thing to service the machine, I'm just going to remove all the covers. You unclip the press studs there, and then just peel off the cover, rolling the machine around the drum, and put that to the side. Then you've got your pulley guard. Remove the pulley guard by wiggling it up and then clicking it off like that. Right. The power feeders at the front with the cam plate. The main three things that wear in the, the drain cleaner that you'll need to service as we go will be the three rollers in here, the power feed rollers, and the bronze torque tube bearing in there. So unscrew your adjusting cap. Lay it to the side, remove your top holder. As you can see, there's one of your rollers, which is what they call the, the RS, the flat rollers. Undo your adjusting bolts on the side in the power feed, and there's your bottom holders. As you see on the bottom holders, it's got a Tollington race bearing with a flat washer. You can apply some grease to parts like that, as we show when I grease it up in a moment. Remove your other holder. and there's your layout for the internals of your power feed. And what we're going to do to show for this experiment, to, they work a lot smoother with the grease behind here, so in that case you'll just remove the circlip, the flat screwdriver, take it off, and obviously the cam plate comes off, and you can see this one's actually pre-greased, and it's got some grease behind it. So when you're reassembling, you're going to put some grease on it and refit that cam plate which I'll do right now. When you fit the cam plate ring back on, just go like 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, go around that, and you can roll it around with your finger, and you get the screwdriver, and it will click in its place, and then just make sure it's inserted in its little groove all the way. And when the grease is in there, that's fine. Right, to the bronze bearing now. This is called the torque tube, and this is called the swing arm. To remove the swing arm, there's a little pin in here. Be careful when you do this, because this is all spring loaded. So you just push the spring in, lift it up, but have one left hand on there, because this could have a tendency to try to, um, with the spring tension here, to flick up and um, try to get, like you saw that just moved. Okay, we lift that up, push your cable through, just like that, and that's your torque tube. That's fine at this stage, if not you can just click it in there so it doesn't come out and potentially hit you in the head. This is the bronze torque tube that's um, going to be your main wearing part and the three rollers here on the, on the power feed. They're the main bits of doing all the consistent rolling and running around and the wear and tear there. Right, to replace it or grease it, there's a little circlip just here and all you do is unclip it like that and the bronze bearing comes off. This is a pre-grease but you would put grease around in there and install a new bearing um, and make sure the circlip. If this torque tube was worn and this circlip holder here was not um, holding the circlip in, you would have to replace the torque tube because the bronze bearing is going to tend to slide over it and not hold itself in position. We'll just click that back in and put that to a side. All right. If you need to replace the belt or the pulley, as the, the, the machines get a little bit older, this um, pulley for the fan belt pulley there actually wears, and you mightn't think it, but actually gets grooves in here. And what it does when it wears, it reduces inside and changes the speed. The drum will never change in speed, but this pulley will wear, and when the belt wears, and the machine will actually go a little bit slower. So this pulley, to remove it, all you do is press down the machine, because the machine is obviously spring-loaded. You can see it actually like the, going down like that. Be careful when you take that off, obviously, for your fingers getting caught under it in your belt, and that's the belt off there. To remove your drum, um, to get to the belt, on the drums themselves there's a locking pin. When you're in operation, this locking pin has always got to be locked down to the back towards the motor. If that locking pin flicks up, what will tend to happen is the drum will walk its way forward and it puts pressure on here and the belt can jump off. So always make sure that locking pin is locked in. 
for this sake. Now this is the heaviest part of the machine, so always be careful, be careful when you lift. When you take it off, lift it down, just place it there. Right, that's how you'll do it if you had to replace a drum and cable to add a new one on. This is the spindle where the drum fits over and in the drum it's got that locking mechanism I showed you before and the locking mechanism locks into those holes there. Occasionally down the track these holes can get elongated and the spindle on the bearings can have excess movement and cause the drum to wobble around. So if that's the case, nine times out of ten it's normally the spindle and bearings get excess movement or it could be the drum um, it's got too much movement on there but you'll just have to see that by looking at it see where the movement is. If you need to replace that spindle what you do there's a 19mm nut or three quarter undo it there grab it on here with some multi grips and things like that and undo it and that will come out. The two bearings to replace the bearings what you do you get a drift and you drift out the, the rear bearing knocks out that way so you get the drift in here and the front bearing will knock out that way and to put them back in all you do is knock them back in to the flush now another little tip if the bearings were loose on the outside in here I think see all these center punch marks you can put center punch marks back in it um, to close the gap up to the bearing so it stops the bearing being loose in there so it sits nice and flush all right there's your belt if you had to replace the belt obviously if it gets cracked long pretend it's like a car belt if you see it's all worn and cracked obviously it's not doing its job and there's the pulley that's going to run on this pulley will wear and it'll change your ratio and it'll make this, um, the machine feed out slower it's a little allen key on there all you do is undo the allen key slide it off and slide a new one on and do your grub screw the allen key back up at times if it's in dusty conditions you'll have to lubricate it these obviously springs you can put CRC or inox on the springs just so you know when you're pushing it down it's nice and free while we're on this section always be careful with your loading bar and at the back of the machine there's two little wing nuts always make sure they are nipped up once you've got your right height um, so this stops if you do load on something it stops the loading bar coming down and um, hitting on the switch cover there so if they're loose and it falls down obviously you don't want it hitting on the switch there are two little bolts that go on the bottom um, in here which I have right here which go in the bottom stop it from um, making the loading bar come out on you if they were loose so at least the loading bar cannot come out in your hand and away from the machine all right to reassemble it so on a bit more of a major service you replace your pulley and your belt first thing you do make sure you put the belt over here because otherwise you're gonna have to pull this part a lot of people think the belt goes on afterwards before the drum but put it over there and it's out of the way so obviously be careful again lifting this back on see here I've got a little bit of grease on the, um, the shaft as well and then I'll see that so lift it on like that now this is where I'm going to lock that locking pin in and then what you do then you grab your 19 mil span at the back go around the back one second I'm using a shift in this situation in a 19 mil three quarter and then you do it up and now you can see it only moves that bit it's locked in one of those holes with the pin one of those three little holes I showed you before now that's locked in it's not going anywhere now you can put your belt back on same thing again watch your fingers feed it over there slowly move around if the belt was sitting back further um, here um, you can adjust that allen key there and bring that pulley forward so the belt runs in the central position or right up to the shoulder and that way um, it's got less chance of jumping off and I'll just move back down here again okay you replace your bronze torque tube bearing which we did before you saw me remove it now we're going to fit that back in and show you how to set the correct way for clearance wise for that right the reason just feed it through there be careful again it doesn't spring up at you obviously grease on the little spindle there going the pin going into the spindle 
Same thing. All those are moving parts, so they need um, grease on them. I've put grease in this situation underneath the bearing and on top. It doesn't hurt because sometimes, occasionally, this bronze bearing will start moving around a little bit and it helps it just there. That little shoulder there, you can see that little square flat is going to sit along the edge of that bronze bearing to hold it in place. So what you do, you flick it over, same thing, flick your pin down and that's in place. Now, just push it in and out a few times manually to feed it. This one's been preset. This torque tube has to have about two to four mil end float in it. And that's where you get these adjusting, on the swing arm, this is called the swing arm, these adjusting bolts, this has got to move. The reason this has got to be not bound up tight like, um, like that, it's got to have its movement, because when the drum, this has got to run individual, um, independently to the drum, so the cable can find its way around the drum, um, that's why it can run independent, because the drum's spinning, and obviously this is going to go in different directions, and that's how it's finding itself in the drum. If that was too tight, you're going to have problems when it feeds back in, it's going to fight itself and the cable is not going to find itself in the drum and it's not going to retract properly or feed properly down the track. Okay, the handbrake is there at the front. As you can see, do the lever. Be careful you don't knock that because um, there you can see it's just it's a slowing up device and it works off the little pulley at the back. Right, going to your power feed now. When you replace the rollers, all you're doing is, it's a flat blade screwdriver, you're undoing that and it's got an axle that goes through there, and then you can just dig the roller out, re put the axle back in and make sure it's tight. Alright. When reassembling, when reassembling, obviously um, you're going to put a bit of grease around the outside. Now the grease we got around this one, we put a little bit on the smear of the insides where all the holders are going and a little bit on the threads there. You don't have to use excess grease because if you use excess grease, what's going to happen when you clear your drains and all the fine roots come back, occasionally they're going to start building up in here and you're going to have to dig um, bits of the root out if you put excess grease because that's going to be a little catchment area. Right, installation of it. Can't go wrong there. Okay. Insert your holder in. This is one of your bottom holders. You've got your new um, rollers in it now. Slips out the grease. Okay. All right hand threads. Now see I'm screwing that in. The correct adjustment for here, this is where a lot of people go wrong. The correct adjustment here, it's only got to clear the U section there and roughly level with that cam plate there. What what happens is I'll just put the other bottom holder in and this is where a lot of people go wrong so that one's just cleared that one there and you see it's just clearing that that's all you need to do what happens is people when the rollers wear all the first thing they do is they screw them in to get more tension on them and all that's doing is when you screw those in it pushes those up and pushes your top holder one up and then your adjusting cap will only hang on by a couple of threads and as soon as you put a bit of load on it'll pop off so that's why this will hang on by four or five threads with the correct adjustment there in your top holder there is two little two little washers and a Tollington race washer in there. If they break or um, dislodge, um, you replace them because obviously they're relying on the pivot when you're actually changing direction. How the cam plate works, excuse me, it's obviously forward and reverse changing and you see everything's nice and lubed and free. When putting the adjusting cap back on, if it doesn't go on the first time, you've got to make sure you actually don't cross thread it. If you go anti-clockwise and let it drop into its thread, um, that's a good way of starting them if it's giving you a little bit of a hard time. But then, see, when they've got new rollers in it, all you've got to do, um, the tension, you can actually feed it and you've only got to bit, apply a bit of tension and it's grabbing and it's feeding. You don't have to force that much like this down. If you're having to force that much pressure on it, 
you know these rollers aren't effective and they're getting worn out and you need to replace your rollers. So going back a an overview of it, it's the main thing is when you're using it, the, the correct adjustment there, don't screw them in too far, just flush with there or just clearing the little U-shape. Have that grease around the top thread because you're always adjusting that, don't run it dry. Your bronze torque tube bearing, which is going, always have a little bit of movement. If it's got excess movement, you know that bronze bearing's worn or there's some worn parts in it. And really, this is like your drive line of the whole, um, pretend it's a car for a second, it's your drive line. So if this has got lots of movement, it's going to be wobbly and noisy and things like that. But if you eliminate it, just get three, three mil max, four mil. Thing. Always when you're using the start off, is make sure that locking pin is always locked towards the motor and it's going to stop the drum coming forward. Another little tip, we go in the back again before you use it. The wing nuts at the back holding the loading bar, make sure they're locked in before you use it in case the handle moves around and knocks on your switch. Um, finally, then now for the last bit of maintenance, a lot of people, if you put um, Inox on it or WD-40 or CRC, it's going to wash off in the drain. The best thing for cable from Cable Life is get yourself a 500ml spray bottle, like an old Windex bottle, or um, buy one from Cheapest Chips or whatever, and have diesel in it. Diesel is oil based, and diesel will impregnate the oil in the cable, and the cables will um, last a bit longer and they won't rust up. Because remember, a rusty cable going over those rollers, you could have new rollers in it after your service, that rust is going to go over the rollers and ruin your new rollers. So, obviously, um, make sure the cable's lubed and all that. Um, and that is about it at this stage. Uh, covers back on? Yep, you would put next thing um, to the final bit. You put your pulley guard cover on. The reason, always have your pulley guard on it, because obviously for OH&S you don't want to get your fingers caught in the, um, with the fan. Just clip that down. It's only got a little screw nut thing on it. And realign it so it, it clears the, it's got little two little um, rubber tangs there so it clears the drum so it's free. And then the last thing you'll do, just roll the splash cover around um, and refit your splash cover. And that's about it.